This isn't really Arizona. This is a more accurate map of the Grand Canyon State. 27% of Arizona is occupied by tribal lands, which are nations within the nation of the United States. These Native American reservations have their own law enforcement, property laws, tax codes, and even sometimes follow different time zones. I'm your host, Jeff Bell, a two-time middle school geography bee champion. In this episode of Fascinating Maps, we'll look at the tribal lands of Arizona with the focus on the Navajo Nation, the largest reservation in the country. Welcome to Planet Bell. The Navajo Nation, a sprawling reservation in Northeast Arizona that spills into parts of Utah and New Mexico, is larger than 10 states. It's about the size of West Virginia. It encompasses some of the West's most spectacular and iconic places, like Monument Valley and Canyon de Chelly, and life there is very different than the rest of the country. One small example. Although Arizona does not follow daylight savings time, the Navajo Nation does. But the Hopi Nation, with enclaves inside the Navajo Nation, doesn't follow DST either. In the winter, all of Arizona is on one time zone. When DST is in effect from March to October, it's complicated. You could ride a horse through Northeast Arizona, crossing through the Navajo and Hopi Nations, never leaving the state, yet have to reset your watch 12 times. Or is it six? I don't know, I make geography videos, I'm not a math wizard, so you tell me in the comments. The time zones can be complicated, but they are way less complicated than the law enforcement jurisdictions. There are three layers of law enforcement on the reservation, the tribal police, county sheriffs, and FBI, each with different authorities. Tribal police can only arrest other natives while on reservations. They have the authority to investigate and detain non-native people on reservations who they suspect of committing crimes, but they cannot arrest them. Tribal police must call for backup from the sheriffs to make the arrest, but sometimes backup never arrives, and they must let the people go even if they catch them in the act. The next layer of authority are the county sheriffs. The Navajo Nation stretches across 11 counties, each with an elective sheriff who can only arrest non-native people on tribal lands. And many non-natives visit the reservation. For example, about 400,000 tourists visit Monument Valley every year, and tens of thousands more drive through the reservation on the highways. Sheriffs can detain and investigate natives on tribal land, but they cannot arrest them. The sheriffs must call the tribal police to make the arrest, but then again, sometimes backup never arrives. There are 180 tribal police officers on a reservation that sprawls over 27,000 square miles and has over 130,000 residents. Using our math skills, we see that as one officer for every 150 square miles, so response times can take an hour or two due to the remoteness of the towns. And if this number of officers sounds inadequate, you're right. A recent report concluded the tribe needs 775 officers to properly serve the reservation. Lastly, the FBI has jurisdiction in Indian country and handles major crimes like murder, rape, or child abuse when it happens against a tribal member on reservation territory. As you can see, this is all very complicated, and it takes cooperation, trust, and mutual respect for the law enforcement officers from the tribe, state, and FBI to work together. In the heart of Navajo Nation is another unique partnership between the federal government and local tribes, Canyon de Chelly National Monument. Canyon de Chelly, owned by the Navajo Nation, is the only National Park Service unit privately owned and cooperatively managed by the MPS. It is regarded as one of the most beautiful canyons in the Southwest, even though it receives only a fraction of the visitors of its more famous neighbors. The canyon has cliff dwellings and ancient stone houses like the famous White House, reminiscent of Mesa Verde. And of course, Canyon Che isn't the only natural wonder in the area. Monument Valley is one of the most iconic sites in America and is in a park operated by the tribe. There is a hiking trail and scenic drive through the towering mesas and buttes, which rise 400 to 1,000 feet above the desert. You may wonder how the Navajo Nation came to be. The story is both tragic and familiar. After years of conflict, the United States Army defeated the Diné people in 1864. It forced them to march 300 miles through the winter to Bosque Redondo, a desolate internment camp in New Mexico, in what became known as the Long Walk. According to historical accounts, about 8,500 people made the trek, with some 200 dying on the way due to starvation, exposure, and violence at the hands of the U.S. military. Those who survived endured miserable conditions at Bosque Redondo, where they were ravaged by disease, hunger, and cold. The government hoped to forcibly assimilate the Native Americans by making them attend school, become Christians, and prohibiting them from singing or praying in their native language. But the land at Bosque Redondo was ill-suited for agriculture, and the experiment failed. A few years later, the Dine people returned to their homeland 
after signing the historic U.S.-Navajo Treaty of 1868, which, in part, established the Navajo Nation, the first Indian reservation west of Oklahoma. They were the first tribe allowed to return to their homeland, but they had to start over. During their exile, they had lost their homes, crops, and livestock. So what is life like on the reservations? Well, it's not easy. Navajo Nation and most reservations in Arizona are remote, and residents often have to drive long distances to border towns like Farmington, Page, Flagstaff, or Holbrook to buy groceries, medicine, or supplies. According to the Navajo Relief Fund, housing and homelessness are chronic problems. It's common for several generations to live together in a single household, many in only a two-bedroom home. Navajo Nation is in the high desert in an area affected by drought and climate change. About 15% of the homes do not have running water, and about one-third don't have access to plumbing, kitchens, or bedrooms. The economic stats of the tribal lands look more like those of a developing nation and not part of the United States. Medium household income is about half the rest of the country, and a staggering 35% of the residents live in poverty, nearly triple the national average. One thing that prevents people from acquiring wealth is property laws. Most of the land is owned by the federal government in trust on behalf of the tribe. Since residents don't own the land, they cannot gain equity in their house, borrow against a mortgage to start a business, pass along the land to future generations, and have little incentive to improve the property or make investments in the community. This explains why so many people live in trailer houses and reservations are often run down. Changing the federal policy to allow individuals to buy and sell reservation land would be a massive boost to these impoverished reservations. However, reforms for Native American reservations aren't a high priority in Washington, especially since Native Americans don't vote in large numbers. Voting on the sprawling Navajo reservation is difficult. There is poor access to registration offices and polling stations, limited transportation, and excessive mail delays. Some people on the reservation don't even have street addresses or post office boxes. But things are changing as more Navajo become politically active, and Arizona is now a swing state where every vote is significant. In 2020, a group called Protect the Sacred organized a trip to the polls on horseback, hoping to inspire people to vote. There are many pressing issues that have an outsized effect on First Americans in Arizona, like access to Colorado River water, climate change, health care, and law enforcement. For the Native Americans of Arizona who live in a nation within a nation, their survival depends on having a say in their future. In our next episode, we will go to Arkansas and visit another rural enclave that is the opposite of the Navajo Nation. Two rural counties in far northwest Arkansas have a booming economy and have more than doubled in population in the last 25 years. The reason? Two words, Walmart. Or is that one word? I don't know. Just click the video link if you want to learn more about this fascinating area.